If Sam Hewen was to walk through Edinburgh, I bet not many people would recognise him or know who he is, unless it's tourists. Jamie Fraser. Hello folks, how's it going? Welcome to my vlog. My name is Sean and I'm a YouTuber from Edinburgh in Scotland. And today I'm here in the city centre of Edinburgh for a specific Outlander related mission. When I was in America and speaking to a lot of Outlander fans and the comments I get on YouTube in general, a lot of people ask me questions about Scottish culture, Scottishness, things that I have found difficult to answer. People ask me about clans, people ask me about tartans, people ask me about the Gaelic language. But if we look at Outlander, we're talking about the, the Jacobites and Culloden and all that. I have mentioned to a few uh, contacts in America that not many people could tell you facts about any of those things. And that's just going by my circle of friends and family and people I know and I've spoke to. Not many people know the history of the Jacobites, Culloden, why it happened, who was involved. I thought I'd do today's video to try and clear it up and actually get some harder evidence and facts, not just based on the people I know. Um, I want to ask people in Scotland what they actually know and I want to emphasise the fact that Scottish people should watch Outlander. Scottish people have not been watching Outlander uh, in any great numbers, certainly not like elsewhere in the world. Uh, and I think that's a shame because it sparked my interest in Scottish history and I think it would get more people here involved. I've actually got a, a friend here, a vlogger who has been on my channel a few times before. Dylan Grote. You've been on the vlog before and introduced before, but if I want you to tell them a bit about yourself, what you do. Um, yeah, my name's Dylan Grote. Uh, I make the occasional video vlogs on YouTube, which is just Dylan Grote on YouTube. Um, I'm a student in Edinburgh and I met Sean through YouTube, actually. I guess Dylan doesn't really prove my point because like, he actually knows more than probably most people I've talked to, which might actually blow my theory out of the water, but um, you actually watch Outlander as well, right? I do, yeah. Um, started watching it because swords, who doesn't like swords? <laughs> swords and fights. <laughs> um, and, well, my girlfriend, she's from America, so she and her mum are into it and then because I started watching it and I started watching with her, you get invested and then you just can't really stop watching it, can you? What have you thought about it so far? It's, it's, it's entertaining. All the, the behaviours in the clans and stuff is all, at least from my knowledge, pretty, pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, That's what I find that interesting. So this video I'm trying to prove the point that Scottish people don't know their history. But actually, Dylan does know a lot, probably a lot more than most. Because you say, you, I, I, I always tell people on this channel that I wasn't taught at school and none of my friends and family were about Scottish history, the clans and stuff, but that's here in Edinburgh and you were taught in Fife, I, right? I grew up in Fife. One interesting fact, where I went to school, at high school, Holyrood High School is actually uh, next to Duddingston, right? And apparently, Bonnie Prince Charlie and his men camped right exactly where my school is now before they went into battle to press and pans. They didn't even mention that in school like that. Yeah, that's... It's quite a cool fact, yeah, though. Yeah, you think that... that probably get as a kid for me anyway as a kid that would get me excited yeah stuff. this could be a regional thing but anyway i want you to go around the streets today and ask people maybe see what they think but, uh let's do it anyway let's see how we get on so basically i'm doing a, a video about like scottish history in terms of, like um Culloden and jacobites and stuff do you know anything about Culloden? <laughs> no nah. no what about um jacobites I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know much about Scottish history either because I wasn't taught at school so I'm like asking people like what they know so thank you very much, I appreciate it. I, I came with the castle and all that and everything, can't like see uh, but I've never heard of Jacobites. Jacobites. Bo that. Bonnie Prince Charlie. Bonnie Prince Charlie. Oh, him. Mugby. Hi. <laughs> yeah. the, the Queen. The Queen. Thank you very much, I appreciate okay. your time there. Eh? Catch Good you later. Bye. That kind of... Um, there you go, that, that's kind of a that's success right there. <laughs> I thought about asking Yoda but... <laughs> I'm from Detroit. You're from Detroit? Amazing! Well, you Even born better! Here. Even better. I was I love born here, but I was only 18 months when I went to Detroit. That's why I don't have any accent whatsoever. Amazing! Sure. Um, do you know a lot about Scottish history at all? Do you know about like Jacobites, Culloden? You know, I, I, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Well, you, know, you already know more than 90% of Scottish people then. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I'm asking people if they know much about Bonnie Prince Charlie. Do you know who he is? Yes, in yeah. fact I went to his memorial up near uh, Fort William uh, really? a few days ago. Yes. Wow, amazing. Like Most people have probably not done that here. Hope you're having a great time in Scotland anyway. We are having a fabulous time, thank you very much. I mean, Sean, nice to meet you. Yeah, I need good luck to get more people to hand for me. Hume statue. Where about are you from? Uh, originally from here. Here? Yeah. Brilliant. I'm trying to look for Scottish people. And it's quite difficult on the wrong mouth. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
Do you know much about the Jacobites? Uh, I know about the Cynthia, uh, the 45 Rebellion. Yep. Um, that's, that's about it, probably. I'm trying to find out um, how much you were kind of taught at school and what. I mean, I'm old school, so we were taught uh, all the kings uh, and the, the different battles, um, especially around about Ayrshire yep. with, um, with Bruce. Uh, Kings of Carrick, right. like that. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. No I really problem. appreciate that. Take That's care. No problem. Good day. Seeing what kind of people's knowledge is about like the Jacobites and Bonnie Prince Charlie. Do you know much about not that period? No, not a lot at all. No. Um, what about Culloden? Do you know much about Culloden? I know where the battlefield is because yeah, I live right. nearby. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Are you up from that way. I live in Elgin. Yeah. I myself didn't get taught much about it, so I think it's pretty vague. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very yeah, much for your yeah. time. I really appreciate that. You're very welcome. Take care. Have a good day. Me and Dylan were just talking about um, Greyfire's Bobby, Bobby the wee dog, and the story. Go on, Dylan, and for the nose rub. What is that supposed to be for good luck, right? Yeah. I probably know more and I've been told more about Bobby, Edinburgh's famous Bobby, than Bonnie Prince Charlie and the Jacobites. So there you go. So we've got a few um, reactions up here on the Royal Mile. Dylan was holding the camera, and um, yeah, I think we kind of proved the point. A little bit. We, the people we asked, like people didn't really know that much. I think, anyway, for the purposes of this video, like people should just watch Outlander. Now that footage that you just saw was from Edinburgh, shot actually a couple of months ago, right when we were in the middle of Outlander season three. Didn't that flash? But I'm no longer there in Edinburgh, Scotland, my home city. I'm actually here in Brazil at the moment. But I wanted to do that little experiment on the streets of Scotland just to kind of confirm a couple of things that I already knew. This video is about two things. First of all, why Scottish people need to watch Outlander. And second of all, why they do not watch Outlander or haven't until very recently. Before we get into that, I need to say a couple of things. Now, Sunday is the day that we generally watch Outlander together and talk about it afterwards. That is when season three has been aired, right? But now it's Droughtlander. Outlander season three is over and we've got nine months, nine whole months, that is a baby, away until season four. I plan to plug in that gap week in, week out on Sundays where I will do a show talking specifically about Outlander and Outlander related subjects. To keep you guys sane and going and to keep myself sane, we will have a lot of fun and I've got a lot of ideas for videos. Second thing and the next way that I want to keep us going during Droughtlander is the fact that I have launched a Facebook discussion group called the Outlander Forum, right? It is over on Facebook, as I said, it's a discussion group. Any of you guys can join. The URL is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Outlander the Forum. And if you just search Outlander Forum, it should come up anyway. Like I said, you're all welcome to join. I'd very much appreciate it if you did. It would be a great place and way for us to keep the discussion alive during Droughtlander and in the future, we can talk about all kinds of Outlander related things. The link is also down below, so get joining up. Hello, everyone. Hello, Sean. Hello, Sean. So I am Priscilla. And I am Marino. We live in here in Boston. Yeah, and we love Outlander. We love Outlander, we are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. See you. See you guys. Bye bye. Bye. Right, onto this episode. As I say, the two things. First of all, why Scottish people need to watch Outlander. Well, I think I demonstrated on the streets there. People in Scotland have a very, very poor knowledge of our own country's history. And I can tell you from my own experience, having grown up in Edinburgh, being educated in the public school system, we were taught very, very little about Scottish history. In fact, I knew almost nothing. Most of my history classes growing up were actually of world affairs, world politics and world history. We're talking things like the World Wars, the Roman Empire, these types of things. Scottish history just was not part of the curriculum. There are theories online that Scottish history was suppressed in the Scottish school system for hundreds of years up until very recently. There is actually some truth to that because until the late 1990s, which is exactly when my schooling ended, Scottish history simply was not part of the curriculum. It has been introduced over the recent years by the Scottish government, but I went to school, for example, primary and high school throughout the 1990s, and I didn't get taught any of that. I knew nothing about Scottish history whatsoever. And I just have to say a very, very huge thank you to the Outlander team really, the writer Diana Gabaldon first of all for creating such a marvellous amazing story and also the production team who have brought it to life on screen because I have learned so so much thanks to Outlander and I only started watching it in August this year so since that time I've basically educated myself on that whole time period. It's a very fascinating, interesting and important 
part of Scottish history. And guys, I didn't even know anything about Culloden, the battle, for example, the famous Scottish battle. I had no notion. Up until very recently, up until I did that Outlander tour vlog, I couldn't even tell you exactly where Culloden, the battlefield, is. I mean, that shit is sad. Really, really sad. But thanks to Outlander, I have discovered that whole part of Scottish history. But I think that is a big reason why Scottish people need to watch Outlander. Because I started watching the show, and as we all know, it's a fictitious series, right? But it's woven around a real time period and around some real facts that happened in Scotland. It is those facts that I learned through watching Outlander which gave me a peak in interest in that time period so I could go off and do my own research on those things, Jacobites, all that kind of stuff, and come to my own conclusions. Outlander gave me a kind of glimpse into that time period. I was fascinated and I thought I need to know more about this. So I went off and did some research and discovery and learned on my own, all thanks to Outlander. And there are so many Scottish people I know are in exactly the same position. If you look at my generation, for example, the millennials, that thing I talked about with Culloden, the battlefield, I bet you none of my peers, nobody I know, for example, in Scotland, would be able to tell you one, two, or three key facts about the Battle of Culloden, about that time period, about the Jacobites. Outlander will give them that gift of knowledge like it did for me, and I'm very, very grateful for it. I just think it's amazing. It's such a great community as well online. We talk about these things, but that is really why Scottish people need to get involved and start watching Outlander. It's so important. But secondly, as to why they do not watch Outlander, why they haven't yet, that is a bit more complicated. There are several reasons why Scottish people haven't necessarily got tuned into Outlander yet. And I wanna talk about a few of them, right? First of all, this has been well publicized online. When Outlander was first released widely around the world, it was not available in Scotland. It was in 2014 when David Cameron met with Sony executives. They discussed a lot of things in terms of Sony's big investments in film in Scotland and specifically Outlander because Outlander is a big massive production, right? A big crew, a big thing for the UK, but it also raises key political points. And that is exactly when we had our Scottish referendum. Scotland was very divided, it was on a knife edge. It seems very, very plausible to me that David Cameron, the Prime Minister at the time, would have had a word in Sony's ears and said, listen, we cannot have this shown on the TV screens at the moment to cause any more divisions. Now, we don't actually know exactly what happened in that meeting, but we have got leaked emails which do give us a little bit of a glimpse. There was a huge, massive leak of Sony emails around that time about other films, but there was some Outlander stuff in there. In an email from Keith Weaver, a Sony Pictures Entertainment Vice President, Senior Vice President, to the then Chief Executive, Michael Linton. This whole thing was discussed before they were going in to meet David Cameron at that time. And I quote, Your meeting with Prime Minister Cameron will likely focus on our overall investment in the UK with special emphasis on the importance of Outlander, particularly as Scotland contemplates detachment this fall. That was around the referendum time and that is when it got widely released around the world and yet in Scotland it was not. So that was 2014. 2015, the next year, the rights to Outlander in the UK were bought by Amazon Prime, Amazon the video service. And that is when it first became widely available throughout the UK. Although it still wasn't released on any kind of domestic television until actually this year. In Scotland, and I'm gonna put this bluntly, we are dinosaurs. Why must the Scots be such intractable people? You guys have been watching streaming services for I don't know how many years, right, around the world. In Scotland, it's quite a new thing. Yes, it was available back when it was launched in 2015, but I don't know anybody in my friends or family who bought, paid for Amazon video service in 2015, even 2016. In fact, it's something that only a lot of my friends and relatives have actually got into this year. Probably everybody I know almost has Amazon, right? But back then they did not. Amazon was just a place where they went to buy stuff. But as a video service, it just was not widely used. So when Outlander was launched in Scotland, it probably just was not something that was in anybody's homes at all until very recently. This year, earlier this year, I toured the United States of America. What I noticed there, there were advertisements, there were billboards, and there were big advertisements plastered all over the side of buses and all different kinds of places all about this show called Outlander. Now whoever distributes Outlander in the United States have obviously spent a lot of money in promoting the show. It was absolutely everywhere. And the next thing I also realized when I was there, when I was on YouTube and other online video services, there were dozens of adverts online for Outlander. Banners, there were pre-roll video adverts, all different kinds of ads for Outlander. They have spent a lot of money in the United States to promote it. In Scotland though, it just has not been promoted at all. I saw Sam Heughan on the side of a bus in New York City and I was like totally blown away. 
I was on my way to the MetLife Stadium to watch some American football and the buses were covered with big pictures of Outlander, Sam Heughan and all the rest of it. I was like, what? They've spent a lot of money promoting the show in North America and probably elsewhere in the world, but in Scotland, nothing whatsoever. So they've just not advertised it to us. And I think that is such a tremendous great shame. It's a big injustice because Outlander is one of the best shows out there. It's all about Scotland, my beautiful country. It uses a big cast, mostly of Scottish actors and production teams. The locations they film in, Lallybroch, all the rest of it, they're all in Scotland. We have a beautiful country and Outlander shows it off spectacularly. And it is such a shame that Scottish people are not able, or have not been able to very recently, to appreciate that. In fact, it's only been in the last couple of months that I've noticed some columnists in the newspapers in Scotland, the main newspapers, the Scottish Sun, the Daily Record, have actually started picking up the Outlander story and have started to actually talk about it. Scotland has just been left in the dark in terms of Outlander and it's a big, big shame. Seeing Scotland on the screen like that is just incredible. Outlander has been amazing. It's just made Scotland look so beautiful and it's kind of a shame that really only people from outside of Scotland have been able to appreciate that. But we're starting to pick up now. People are starting to pay attention in Scotland, we're starting to watch. And this might sound shocking, but I say this to everybody when they come to Scotland to watch Outlander stuff. If Sam Hewan was to walk through Edinburgh, the city centre, I bet not many people would recognise him or know who he is, unless it's tourists. I would love to know what Diana Gabaldon, the writer, would think of that. I'm sure she would be appalled. But this is the point where I really need to personally thank Diana and also the TV production crew for bringing Outlander to life on the screens, the actors, everybody involved in Outlander from start to finish because it has educated me. As I say, I started watching it in August this year and ever since then, I it's changed what I know about Scotland and really Scottish people need to get watching it. It is so good and it will teach them things that they were never taught at schools. It is unfortunate that the show has not been promoted to us, but we are here now. I am starting to hear the talk of Outlander throughout my group of friends and stuff on the newspapers. People are starting to peak interest. But guys, take this into account, right? When they were filming season three, Ardsmuir Prison is 500 meters from where I live. I'm not joking. I live 500 meters from Ardsmuir Prison, Craig Miller Castle. And I remember at the time when they were filming up there, people were like, there's something going on up at the castle. It's a show called Outlander. But none of us knew what it was and we're like, nah. So Sam Hewan and David Berry and all the cast that were there at Ardmuir Prison, Murtag, they were all filming for days, 500 meters from my home and I didn't go up there and see them. And that's the place where I walk my dogs just about every single day. But I didn't bother because I had no idea what the show was. And that has got to be my biggest regret of Outlander, my kind of journey with Outlander so far is that they were filming so close to my house and I didn't go there. What a pity. But Outlander is a really big gift to people in Scotland and we need to start watching more. We need to spread the message and tell our friends and family about the show. It was actually my parents, they started watching it first. They told me about it. They said there was this great show about Scottish clans and all that kind of stuff. And then just one day I decided to watch it and I was hooked from the get-go. There literally is no excuses anymore for Scottish people not to watch it. We had excuses. Everything from politics to it not being shown properly in Scotland, but now it's available for everybody. Anyway guys, I did say I would be doing these Outlander vlogs every Sunday to get you through Droughtlander, and here they are. I hope you enjoyed this one. Hopefully it will help us get through Droughtlander without turning to the drink, right? But also, as I said, I've launched this group over on Facebook that we can all discuss things together. Thank you very much for watching guys. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below about everything I've just talked about. Scottish people and Outlander, why they haven't watched, why they don't know anything about it, and what you guys think about that. I would love if Diana would get to know more about this as well so she can like understand the scenario in Scotland and why we haven't watched it until this far but, and I feel like I can talk on behalf of the country, like thank you so much for bringing this to us. It was such a big gift for me. Anyway, there are a lot more vlogs to come. Thank you so much for watching and all your comments. It really means so, so much to me. I will speak to you again really, really soon. Take care.